Hello everyone. My name is Karen Mornin and I'm a registered dietitian from the Healthy Heart Program at St. Paul's Hospital. And today I'll be presenting on the virtual grocery store tour part four, fruits and vegetables. The dietitians in the Healthy Heart Program include Michelle Spatel and Kay McQueen. So here's our outline. I'll be talking about the healthy plate model and portion control, the benefits of eating fruits and vegetables, and tips on how to eat more fruits and vegetables, and tips for grocery shopping and preparing them. Most people have seen this plate and these hand portions, and today the focus is on fruit, aiming for around a fist size two or three times a day or so, and a big portion of your plate, vegetables, lots of colors, or two hands worth. What are the benefits of eating at least five servings of vegetables and fruit every day? Is it number one, it helps lower blood pressure, number two, may help protect arteries, number three, assist in weight management, number four, lowers your risk of heart disease, or all of the above. That's right, all of the above. Tons of benefits, but the other part is they also taste great, and there's so much variety within this food group. So how much is a serving? A serving size, if you can imagine, is about one tennis ball size or half a cup. And that would include like a medium fruit, a smaller banana. If you're having leafy vegetables, one cup is about a serving. So if you aim to have some with each meal, that's an easy way to get up to your five minimum servings per day. Include them in your snacks as well. Now, how many servings of vegetables and fruit would you eat if you had none at home? Your freezer was bare and so were your cupboards. Not too many. So what could you do? One of the main reasons to buy frozen fruits and vegetables Let's have a look. They're just as nutritious as fresh, which is true. They're convenient. They're usually just with simple ingredients, whole foods. They're usually less expensive and you can enjoy out of the season produce. And all of the above are some good reasons. Frozen is great. They're picked at the season where they're ripe, flash frozen, the nutrients are retained, and they're super convenient. If we look on this page, we have butternut squash, which is already cubed for you, that could easily be roasted or perhaps made into a soup. If you need the illusion of having more um, noodles, but you want to eat more vegetables, try the veggie spirals of butternut squash. With frozen vegetables, they can easily be used in a stir fry. All you need to do is open the bag. The chopping's already done for you. They just require slightly less cooking time. As well as frozen vegetables, if you want to add a little flavor, you can perhaps add a little bit of low sodium chicken stock or vegetable broth and simply microwave them in the oven and add them to whatever you're eating. And there's lots of choices and varieties. Um, in this slide, we've included brands, President's Choice, available from Superstore, Great Value from Walmart, the Kirkland brand from Costco, um, so lots of uh, places uh, to buy uh, frozen fruits and vegetables and just buy them when they're on sale too. What to look for in a label when you're purchasing frozen vegetables? Not very many of them, but the rare one might be um, too high in sodium as in this example. 
And what are you looking for? You're looking for definitely less than 15%. Above 15%, as shown in the little diagram in the top right corner, is a lot of sodium. Ideally, you want 5% or less, as in these brands. This uh, Green Giant Simply Steam only has um, 115 milligrams, which is 5%. Or if you look at the other version, it's only 25 milligrams. And it's got the flavoring all done for you. You simply just heat it up and it's ready to go. The other consideration with buying vegetables, if you buy them in the can or in the jar, make sure there's not excessive oil or salt or um, heavy brines. You can always rinse them off or use a small portion of them to reduce your sodium. What about fruit? What to look for when you're buying frozen fruit, dried fruit? So the main thing is, is to choose no sugar added. So when you're buying canned fruit, here's a whole uh, bunch of brands that have um, no sugar added. And the applesauce would make a very good grab and go snack for you. The mandarin oranges are quite lovely in a spinach salad. To be decadent, sliced pears, you could have them perhaps drizzled with some uh, dark chocolate for a dessert. The peaches, the pineapple chunks, um, these could all go into oatmeal along with the sliced pears as well. You could do overnight oats, lots of different ways to have fruit. You could serve them with yogurt, maybe topped with some seeds or nuts or some um, lower fat, lower sugar granola. And for dried fruit, the main thing is to purchase ones, again, without sugar added. Some of them are dusted with um, refined sugars or oils. So you just want the fruit. And think about the portion size. Before you buy um, raisins, think about them as grapes. And think about having perhaps, you know, that tennis ball size of grapes that shrinks down to about two tablespoons. So the raisins and any other dried fruit are a concentrated form of sugar. They're a great choice, very nutritious. Just limit your portion to about two tablespoons per day or roughly per serving. Frozen fruit are great. Blueberries are wonderful in oatmeal, raspberries, all the fruit here easily added to oatmeal year round. They could easily go into smoothies and depending on the time of year, if it's summertime when it's really hot, frozen fruit make a lovely snacking snack to cool you down. The frozen fruit can also easily be used in baking, um, in crumbles, muffins, lots of different ways to use uh, fruit to have readily available in your pantry. Now let's take a closer look at sugar. Which has the most amount of sugar? Is it the 250 ml Coke? This is a stubby Coke, not the um, stubby bottle, not the uh, full can or a tall mocha, which is 12 ounces uh, latte, and it's 2% with no whip. Is it a cup of grape juice, uh, eight ounces or 250 mils, or the medium coffee double-double from Tim's? So let's take a closer look. It's not the Coke, it's actually the grape juice. And in all fairness, we put the higher sugar grape juice in this example um, of fruit. It has more sugar than a lot of other fruit juices, but let's take a closer look as well with sugar. For most of the women, you wanna aim for less than six teaspoons of sugar per day, or about 24 grams or so, and every four grams of sugar is one teaspoon. For the most of the men, you want to aim for far less than about 9 teaspoons per day or 36 grams. And this does not include the fruit sugar naturally occurring in fresh frozen or dried fruit. It also does not include lactose found in milk and yogurt. It includes any added sugars such as table sugar, brown sugar, molasses, honey, 
maple syrup, agave nectar, all these added sources, you want to limit them because especially if you have higher blood sugars or you have high triglycerides, and excess sugar increases the risk of heart disease. So here's the answer when we look. The grape juice actually has nine teaspoons of sugar. And again, this is a higher sugar juice. The mocha from um, Starbucks without whip actually has seven teaspoons of sugar and also eight grams of saturated fat. The Coke has seven teaspoons of sugar and the Double Double has uh, four and a half teaspoons of sugar. What about fruit versus juice? Well, here is a comparison of orange juice versus a medium navel orange. So the calories in the juice are about 110 and an average cup of juice actually has six teaspoons of sugar and this is in no added juice and no fiber. Compared with the orange, it has less than half the calories, only two teaspoons of sugar, which we don't count actually, and two and a half grams of fiber. So the orange will actually fill you up much more than the orange juice. When we drink juices or drink our calories, we don't notice those calories and definitely juice is a weight gainer. If you're trying to gain weight, you know, that could be a good thing. But if you're trying to lose weight, it is recommended that you really limit your juice intake. Now, how can you add flavor to your vegetables, but you don't want to add lots of salt? Here's some suggestions, perhaps. And there's a theme here you probably noticed where the answer is, you know, usually the last answer, but let's take a look. You can use low sodium broth, such as chicken or veggie stock. You can use a combination of vinegars, oils, nuts and seeds. You can also use salt free seasoning mixes, number two dried herbs and spices, citrus goes a long way, lemon, lime, and orange, and you can use small amounts of sauces. And yes, the answer is all of the above. Just to point out, there's lots of different ways. Let's take a close. For those of you that like lots of flavor, sesame oil adds a, a wonderful flavor. You just need a little bit, a teaspoon. It drizzled on some of the steamed or uh, microwave frozen vegetables. Great choice. Olive oil can also add a nice flavor. You get a good quality extra virgin olive oil. Almonds are quite nice or quite lovely on green beans and sesame seeds actually um, are quite nice on lots of different vegetables easily sprinkled on many different foods. Another choice are the vinegars. Apple cider vinegar adds a lovely flavor to vegetables. Balsamic vinegar as well. Um, we have a recipe for roasted vegetables with this. Rice wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, lots of options to add flavors to your foods. fresh herbs and spices. So um, you can either use fresh or garlic that is uh, garlic powder. It adds a really nice flavor in roasted vegetables. Grated ginger is um, really nice in stir fries. If you like spice, um, the wasabi or um, fresh um, horseradish is a nice way to add a lot of zing. Um, jalapeno peppers, onion and onion flakes, um, really great. And when you're done with your um, vegetables roasting in the oven, you can just put a little bit of uh, lemon or lime for a bit of freshness. And there's lots of um, herbs and spices all ready to go. Mrs. Dash, most people are very familiar with that and they have the spicy version. There's President's Choice, Clubhouse. These can just be simply sprinkled on and tossed with your uh, frozen vegetables or steam vegetables, perhaps with a combination of some of the oils and vinegar, just a little splash to add lots of flavor without adding lots of salt. 
and then sauces. We've got some recipes for some stir fries using ketchup. We've got different mustards. You could use uh, yellow mustard perhaps, or Dijon mustard or grainy mustard adds a lot of uh, really nice flavor. And we've also got salsa. Salsa is really great on a potato. If you do use the low sodium soy sauce, just limit the portion to no more than about a tablespoon. And if you like spice, uh, Tabasco sauce adds a nice, uh, just need a couple drops. We'll add um, some zip as well as a sriracha sauce. Tomato paste is lovely with oregano, a bit of olive oil, perhaps on your spaghetti squash. And you can combine garlic and honey for a garlic um, honey sauce, which is quite delicious as well on your vegetables. Here's a recipe putting it all together. So you can combine uh, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, some herbs like thyme, and you could also add to this recipe perhaps some onion flakes, garlic flakes. Simply toss with your vegetables, either frozen from the bag or freshly chopped, and then roast them in the oven halfway through. Just toss them um, halfway through cooking and then just uh, roast or bake for another 15-20 minutes and then they're done. Here's some um, standard um, stir fry sauces. We've got the quick Zechuan sauce with sesame oil, ginger, garlic, that's where the ketchup comes in, the rice vinegar. You can mix this all together and stir fry your vegetables with this sauce. Here's a peanut sauce with peanut butter, soy sauce, rice vinegar, garlic, hot chili sauce, as well as an orange sauce. And this is where juices can fit in to your diet, using them in perhaps salad dressings or uh, flavorings in stir fry sauces because we're using a small amount. And remember to use a small amount of the low sodium soy sauce when you use it. A great kitchen tool to have is actually a planer. It's like a mini grater and it's an easy way to grate ginger or orange zest to add um, lots of flavor to your foods. What if you don't have time or dislike to chop vegetables for salad? What could you do? There's the salad kits. Most of you have seen them in the grocery store. They're basically the vegetables already chopped up for you with the dressings in the package, as well as other toppings. I'm a big fan of the sweet kale salad. It's got cranberries and pumpkin seeds with the dressing. All you need to do is open the bag, toss and serve. These are great to have on hand to add to your meals. If you like, you can buy the chopped vegetables fresh already done for you. They've got the shredded carrot, the broccoli coleslaw, grated coleslaw. And my suggestion would be perhaps get a big Tupperware container, mix whatever uh, greens and carrot, perhaps you could add onion to this, or um, some bell peppers, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, just make a big, um, selection of this in a Tupperware, don't add the dressing, and it will last for at least four days in the fridge. You can just pull from this and add your own uh, dressing. Here's some commercial dressings. The main thing to look for when you're looking for commercial dressings is number one, the serving size, because some of the salad dressings will list the serving size as one tablespoon. And most people use perhaps a little bit more than this on their salads. So an easy way to measure is just use the cap, the lid from the salad dressing if it comes off, or you could use, you know, a spoon, whatever works for you, for about two tablespoons. And then the next thing to look at after the serving size would be the amount of sodium or salt in the portion. Most commercial salad dressings have anywhere from 100 to 300 milligrams, and that's for two tablespoons. So think about how much you're actually using. If you're using a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons, you are going to get double the amount of sodium. So what could you do? If you want the illusion of more dressings um, and you kind of don't want to make your own necessarily, you could always add vinegar and oil to the dressings, or if it's a creamy dressing, add some Greek nonfat yogurt to the dressing. That way you can get more of the dressing 
without the salt. Most dressings are low in saturated fat. They're usually made with canola oil, olive oil, soybean oil, which are all healthy oils, but some of the creamier ones are made with cheeses, and depending how much cheese is in there, it will be high in saturated fat, about four grams. To put in perspective, most of the women, um, you wanna aim for about uh, perhaps no more than 12 to 14 grams of saturated fat in a day. For most of the gentlemen, it would be no more than about 16 to 18 grams of saturated fat per day. So if you're using a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons of dressing, you're, you might get up to eight grams of saturated fat per day. So again, dilute this with the Greek non-fat yogurt. The other um, part to consider, if you get a light dressing, these are lower in calories, tend to be lower in sodium. Um, the first ingredient is water. So technically you could also dilute your dressings with water and save some money. There are some lower sodium salad dressing. The brag in the middle only has 16 milligrams. Or you could make your own salad dressing. A really simple salad dressing is simply combining balsamic vinegar and a really good quality extra virgin olive oil. The two together, that's all you need. If you want to zip it up a little bit, you can take a look at this recipe where we've added a little bit of sweetness with maple syrup or honey or even brown sugar, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and you can use garlic powder or a garlic clove and a, a little bit of herbs, and you could omit the salt to keep the sodium down. Lots of other different uh, dressing choices as well. And here's some great salad combinations for the balsamic vinaigrette. It's quite nice with tomato, maybe some fresh basil, avocado, radish, and celery. And for cheeses, you definitely want to use lower fat cheeses and think of them as flavoring on your salad, not as protein. So adding a couple tablespoons of low fat uh, skim mozzarella will definitely add a lot of interest um, and flavor to the salad. Snacking on vegetables are part of your meal or it's simply adding them for lunch. Vegetables are now available in grab and go ready to serve packages. The sugar snap peas are really um, delicious. Same with the baby carrots. We've got radishes now ready to go to snack on. The bell peppers, the cherry tomatoes, mini cucumbers, celery. And if you're a fan of dips, you could uh, per dip them in hummus, they've got individual mini hummus, or you can use tzatziki. You can simply buy the commercial tzatziki and mix it half and half with the Greek non-fat yogurt to make a, a really easy dip. Now, here's another question for you. Uh, for those of you who are really keen and really aim to eat more vegetables, I think that's great. But be careful. Think about it, how hungry you would be if you go to eat a meal and it contained vegetables versus if it contained vegetables plus a protein source like salmon and rice. Some people, um, when they go to eat more vegetables, they aim to eat a huge salad and they don't have the protein or the starch. Make sure that you do the meal balancing where you have at least three to four food groups so that can help fill you up. Now a lot of people ask, what are the best fruits and vegetables to have? What should I buy? Well, yes, pro purchase local and in season wherever possible, and this is where frozen can fit in. However, you know, they, they are all good options and aim for color. As a minimum, aim for something green every day, such as broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, zucchini, and something orange every day, such as bell peppers, squashes, carrots, papaya, oranges. And if any patient is on warfarin or coumadin, make sure that you speak with your registered dietitian on how this can fit in. And you wanna aim, after you get your green and orange, all the rainbow of colors, the purple that you see, the red that you see, all those means more nutrients. 
So please try to get all the flavors of the colors. You'll be doing your heart a favor and getting tons of nutrients to protect your heart and your arteries. Here's a summary of tips. Ideally, to get to meet your fruit and vegetable needs, aim for half your plate as vegetables. And for convenience, if you have the frozen, the canned, the pre-cut always available, it makes it very convenient and easy. Purchase what's in season and what's on sale. You can stock up on um, fresh and freeze it for extra use. And then think about roasting a, maybe a tray or two of vegetables and you can always um, put them in Tupperware and the extras put in Tupperware and use throughout the week as lunches, as side dishes. And if you have a serving of vegetables and fruit with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, one at breakfast, two at lunch, two at dinner, there's your minimum five per day. Fruit is awesome with breakfast, enjoy it as a snack, dessert, lots of different ways to get lots of fruits and vegetables. I love the way Michael Pollan said it. Um, and remember that small changes in your diet add up to big differences in your health. So eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Thank you for listening.